Right now, our roller coaster week of weather continues into the weekend. Chris is tracking a warm up and whether the snow was behind us for good. And bad news for drivers looking ahead as gas prices are on the rise. Why experts don't expect that trend to change anytime soon. Plus, get ready to jump around. The Badgers are back on the field today. We'll tell you why you may want to check out the football team in action this weekend. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. We are certainly jumping around. It is, it is the weekend. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday, April 13th. I'm Josh Breder with meteorologist Chris Reese. A little chilly out there this morning, but some sunshine today the way it looks. Yeah, a little bit of sunshine okay. is going to filter in. The clouds, of course, out there right now are not really all that much. I, were, I was able to see the stars on my way into work, so that's good news. Look at this clear sky is being reported at the airport right now. The temperature 34 and winds out of the southwest at 9. It's southwest wind, but wind in general with temperatures this cool creates a little bit of a wind chill into the upper 20s right now. Temperatures are mainly in the low 30s for just about everyone, though. The freezing mark as you work your way towards the north and west. Janesville also at the freezing mark. But 30s is going to be the name of the game as you wake up and begin to head out the door. Those winds are coming out of the south and west, and they're going to be picking back up as we go throughout the day, eventually turning out of the west and northwest as we go later on into this afternoon and evening. So do expect it to be another breezy day, not as breezy as yesterday, Josh. Yesterday, if you walked outside, it was just terrible hair day. I do think we're <laughs> going to be a little bit better today, but still a little bit breezy. Temperatures warming up towards 47 as we move into the afternoon. Here's the overall picture across parts of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes right now. And you can see there's a little bit of cloud cover, but most of that is starting to lift up north of Madison, which is fantastic news. A lot of folks are Ooh. excited. They're going to be heading out to the first outdoor farmers market of the season. I'll tell you what, grab a jacket. Those temperatures are going to be around 33 as you begin to head out the door and really staying in the 30s while you are there. But uh, we can hope that next weekend will be a lot better. At least it's not snowing in that forecast. I so. feel like <laughs> nothing really can keep people away from the farmer's market. Oh, though. yeah. That, I feel like if we had a blizzard, people would people be out still there. Be there. It is time for the farmer's market. Including our Christina Lori. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you. Well, the Midwest Horse Fair continues today, so if you're not one of the 60,000 people attending this weekend, you'll want to avoid John Nolan Drive and Rimrock Road altogether. Traffic is expected to get so bad, the Dane County Sheriff's Office sent out a press release nearly 48 hours ahead of time warning drivers about those backups. The fair is expected to affect drivers heading both east and westbound on the Beltline starting at 6 this morning and running until noon. It is the largest three-day horse fair in America. 300 clinics, seminars, and educational talks are presented by some of the top horse professionals. More than 500 exhibitors will be offering items for sale. If you plan to drive any time this weekend, you'll want to make sure you've budgeted a little extra for gas. Gas prices are up, and experts say it's going to get worse before it gets better. The national average has skyrocketed 26 cents a gallon in just the past month. In California, it's much worse. Prices are already over four bucks a gallon at some gas stations, a level not seen in almost five years. Refinery issues on the West Coast have contributed to the rising gas prices. Recent flooding in the Midwest also affected ethanol production, a fuel required in summer gas blends. Really, the only way motors can fight back right now is to shop around and be aware uh, of various prices in their area. With prices only expected to go up, gas experts also recommend waiting until Monday to fill up. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are the worst days since prices tend to rise for the weekend. You have just two days until tax day. April 15th is already this coming Monday, and there's some good news for Wisconsin filers right now. CBS reports two Wisconsin counties have made the list for least likely to be audited. Those are Calumet and Washington counties. Eight out of the ten most likely to be audited counties are in Mississippi. The data says Americans in poor rural counties are more likely to be audited by the IRS than taxpayers in wealthier counties. Since 2010, the number of millionaires audited has declined by half. By Monday, the IRS is expected to receive an unprecedented 14 million requests for filing extensions. Senate lawmakers say it's because the IRS is faced with more tax help questions and more complicated returns because of changes in tax law. 
Lawmakers also said the number of extensions was so high they even considered whether the IRS should move the filing season deadline back. In more local news this morning, the Dane County Farmers Market is officially back on the square today. This year, there are 270 members total. They won't all be there on the same time. On any given Saturday, you'll find between about 130 to 160 vendors. There are nine new vendors this year selling a wide range of products, including organic cranberries, organic apples, goat meat, and smoked trout. But the market's claim to fame and what sets it apart from every other farmer's market is it's the largest producers-only market in the country. Having the producer be the person behind the stand is absolutely an amazing resource. Um, we've all walked around the farmer's market and kind of been tempted by something that was so beautiful, but you don't actually know what to do with it. Ask the person behind the stand. They grew it. They can tell you exactly how to prepare it and what the best way to eat it is. In season right now, lots of greens like lettuce mixes, kale and spinach. You can also pick up storage crops like potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots and cabbage. And like any spring, there will be lots and lots of plants. The market opens at 615. Into the Channel 3000 Alert Center this morning, you'll want to check your refrigerators this weekend. A major food packaging company is recalling its pre-cut fruit due to the possibility of salmonella contamination. Cato Foods LLC is voluntarily recalling pre-cut watermelon, honeydew melon, cantaloupe, and fruit medley products containing one of those melons. So far, a total of 93 cases have been reported in the outbreak from nine states, including Wisconsin, Illinois, and Minnesota. The recall products are packaged in clear plastic clamshell containers and sold under various brands, depending on where you bought them from. Retailers include Whole Foods, Target, Walmart, and Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's, rather. You can find a link to the full list of recall products on our website, channel3000.com. A new report says the state is failing when it comes to policies on addressing lead in your child's drinking water at school. It also says most schools still have faucets or fountains containing lead, but they're not required to test for it. Plus, that testing is costly. The Madison Metropolitan School District tested theirs for the first time in over 30 years back in 2017. That cost over $100,000. The results showed that 93% of all water fixtures in the district were below the federal standard for lead. Out of the 1,300 tested, 97 samples came back higher than EPA recommends. That fi that those fixtures have since been replaced. The district now tests 10% of those fixtures annually, but most districts don't test at all. Now environmentalist groups say more needs to be done. The problem is that across the state, we don't have requirements for testing, disclosing, and ultimately getting the lead out of our drinking water in schools. The group Wisconsin Environment is urging state lawmakers to pass Governor Evers' budget proposal, which allocates $40 million to support lead service line removal. Republican leaders won't say whether that will happen primarily due to the cost. 5.08 this morning, baseball is just getting started, but football fans are looking ahead to the fall this weekend as they take a look at the Packers preseason schedule. It features an opener at Lambeau Field and all four games against a a a AFC teams. The Packers will start with the Houston Texans at home, then at Baltimore and the Raiders at a location to be determined. They're still finalizing exact dates as well. They'll finish with the Chiefs at Lambeau on August 29th. You can get your first and only glimpse of the Badgers ahead of fall this weekend. Their spring practice is today. It is open to the public and you may want to make sure you're there as there is no spring game this year. The team still has a lot to work out in addition to last year's senior class. The Badgers also said goodbye to quarterback Alex Hornibrook ahead of spring training. Coach Paul Chris says or seems optimistic about what he's seen so far practice. Obviously we're, we're early in that process for defining this this offense's personality and, and you know we got some good pieces certainly we lost you know some really good players right but we got some good players that are coming back and so it's this group's opportunity to build their own identity the badgers practice is open to the public starting at 11:30 this morning well after 50 years and at age 82 badger band director mike lacrone is retiring after tonight's concert Lacrone's career has lasted longer than any other director in the Big Ten. Mike directed the 280 members of the band in their final dress rehearsal earlier this week. 50 alumni have returned to Madison to perform in the concert and help commemorate 50 years. This is it. 
Getting very close, right? <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I'm. It's been an exciting year for me, obviously, but it's also, it's. I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, I hate to quit doing something that I've done for so long, and and I've had so much fun doing it. I think that's the bottom line too. So, uh, I've accepted it. <laughs> you can see more of Susan Simon's conversation with Lacrone ahead of his final concert in our 5:30 hour this morning. Lacrone's final performance is tonight at the Cole Center starting at 7 p.m. 10 minutes past 5 right now and after a wild week of weather, we've got a bit of sunshine on the way for our Saturday. Let's take a live look over the Capitol this morning, which will be hustling and bustling with all of those farmers market shoppers this morning. Chris is in next with your first alert forecast on News 3 Now this morning. Thirty four degrees is our temperature as we begin to start the first half of our weekend. But hey, folks, things are actually going to end up shaping up pretty well for us as we go throughout the day. Those temperatures right now are mainly in uh, the 30s for just about everyone. 32 in Janesville and Monroe, same for Mineral Point and Platteville. 33 as you work your way towards the Dells. But the moral of the story is most of us are either at that freezing mark or hovering right around, give or take a degree or two winds are coming out of the south and west. Oddly enough, that's what's helping to keep things just a little bit milder tonight, along with some cloud cover uh, that is just to the north of Madison. So that's why some of those places north of us are a little bit warmer. Winds are going to begin to turn as we go throughout the day by 330. We'll begin to see more of a due westerly to northwesterly wind that will eventually become northerly. And then northeasterly as we work our way into Sunday and Sunday itself will be a breezy day as well. Those winds will continue to pick up and we'll see those winds coming in sustained at about 15 to 20 miles per hour as we go throughout the day. 
on Sunday. That is as we watch uh, this next region of low pressure that is working its way in from the four corners right now. This is really getting ready to uh, spark a severe weather outbreak across the far deep south. Already we are starting to see uh, the cloud tops really begin to explode and grow. This is a sign of showers and thunderstorms already starting to blossom across the deep south. In fact, as we begin to throw radar on this, you'll actually be able to see some of those showers and thunderstorms. And this is where we actually do have the bullseye of expected severe weather as we move into the afternoon, perhaps a tornado outbreak across parts of Louisiana. We put this in the motion. Watch how the showers and thunderstorms really begin to increase this right here. This looks really isolated in northern Louisiana, but that is a strong and dangerous signal uh, for the potential of violent tornadoes. So pay attention to the weather down south today. For us, we're going to be on the northern side of this system, and we may actually luck out and stay completely dry from that as that skirts by towards the south and east. The next thing we'll watch for a decent chance of rain is actually going to come in uh, with this next bigger system into Thursday. And again, that does look to be rain. The snow, if it makes its way this far north, will likely miss us towards the south and east. This model is the farthest north of the models. Watch this as we go through the afternoon and into Sunday. We'll top out around 47 today, right? Cooling down into the low 30s. You see that cloud cover coming in and into Sunday. Notice that this model doesn't even have the snow chance on the map in Wisconsin. So we are truly watching that um, as we go throughout the day. And then, of course, temperatures will begin to gradually warm up um, by the time we go towards Tuesday. All right, Chris, Josh. thank you. If you're out at a park with your family this weekend, you might notice a rain gauge in one of the shelters. It's part of the city's plan to monitor rainfall in watersheds and prepare for future flooding events. Most of those gauges will be at shelters and parks. Others will be installed at city-owned golf courses and fire stations. Those will start going in this month and stay in place through November. There's some good news for Madison boaters this weekend. City parks are installing piers on Lake Mendota and Monona. It's a sign warmer weather is on the way. So far, crews installed piers at Olin, Ulbrick, Tenney, Warner, and Marshall Parks. The city says it hopes to finish installing piers at the other parks in the coming weeks. 517 right now, the latest version of Les Miserables hits the sc small screens this weekend. And a daytime talk show is shaking up things in its lineup. Plus, there are several shows and movies for you to enjoy this weekend. Will's in next with three things to watch on News 3 Now this morning.
Welcome back at 520 in entertainment news. Big changes are ahead for an afternoon talk show airing right here on News 3 Now. Sarah Gilbert announced this week she'll leave the talk at the end of the season. Gilbert says she's torn but wants to spend more time with her children and work on other projects. She created the show and is one of the executive producers. Along with Sharon Osborne, she's been sitting at the table the longest at the talk since the show first launched in 2010. Les Mis is coming to PBS, the six-part miniseries based on the novel Star Wars Dominic stars Dominic West and Lily Collins, who plays the character Fontaine. Collins calls a role her most vulnerable yet. You may remember Anne Hathaway won an Oscar starring in that role in the 2012 film adaptation. The new televised series begins tomorrow. If you're looking for something to check out this weekend, Will Lofer has you covered with three things to watch. The law says women stay home, men go to work, but all people must be treated equally. New on home video this week is on the basis of sex. I want to be a lawyer. I want to represent clients in pursuit of justice. Felicity Jones stars as Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the real life story of the Supreme Court Justice's early career. You will lose, and when you do, you will set the woman's movement back 10 years. You don't get to tell me when to quit. I knew this case disrupted our lives. Who's it for if not for me? You cannot be. On the Basis of Sex is available to rent or buy everywhere now. The word woman does not appear even once in the U.S. Constitution. Nor does the word freedom, Your Honor. This Sunday marks the premiere of the final season of Game of Thrones. I promise to fight for the living. I intend to keep that promise. Watch Daenerys Targaryen, Jon Snow, Cersei, dragons, and more fight each other and ice zombies to see who will rule the Seven Kingdoms. They're coming. Our enemy doesn't tire. Doesn't stop. Doesn't feel. Game of Thrones Season 8 premieres 8 p.m. this Sunday on HBO. Mummies. Finally, this week marks the 20-year anniversary of 1999's The Mummy. Oh, so you're still here. <laughs> We've got problems. Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz star in the adventure in which they must defeat a mummy who has come back to life. Once this creature has been reborn, his curse is going to spread until the whole of the Earth is destroyed. Yeah? And is that my problem? Well, it is everybody's problem. The Mummy is available to rent or buy everywhere now. This just keeps getting better and better. Uh, Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch. And this is Will Loper for News 3 Now this morning. There's a new series debuting on Netflix this summer. It's based on the books of Armistead Maupin. Armistead Maupin's tale of the city picks up on Barbary Lane where the books left off. It stars Laura Linney and Ellen Page. There are nine novels in total if you want to check those out before watching the on-screen version. You can catch it starting June 7th. And you just saw the Game of Thrones preview there with Will. The hysteria is building ahead of tomorrow's final season de debut. So much so that it even hit the Tower of London. Tourists visiting the famous London attraction were expecting a traditional changing of century duty from the, er, from the British's army's Coldstream guards as they played the standard of St. George March. Then suddenly, the guards switched to a performance of the Game of Thrones title song, complete with actors putting on a sword display and marching in time. The final series of Game of Thrones kicks off tomorrow night on HBO. 525 right now, and there's more local news ahead for us this morning. We'll have the day's top stories after the break. Plus...
A News 3 Now exclusive, a look back at 50 years. We sit down with legendary UW band director Mike LaCrone as he shares some of his fondest memories and his plans for the future. That's when News 3 Now This Morning returns. Right now, the end of an era. Mike LaCrone will lead the Badger Band for one final show tonight. Susan Simon talks with him about some of his biggest and best moments over the past 50 years. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and thanks for staying with us on this Saturday, April 13th. I'm Josh Breider. Meteorologist Chris Reese will give us an update on the weekend forecast in just a moment, but first, right to today's headlines. A major food packaging company is recalling its pre-cut fruit this morning due to the possibility of salmonella contamination. Cato Foods LLC is voluntarily recalling pre-cut watermelon, honeydew melon, cantaloupe, and fruit medley products containing one of those melons. So far, a total of 93 cases have been reported in the outbreak from nine states, including Wisconsin, Illinois, and Minnesota. The recall products are packaged in clear plastic clamshell containers and sold under various brands depending on where you bought them from. Retailers include Walmart, Whole Foods, Target, and Trader Joe's. You can find a full list of those recall products on our channel3000.com. You can get your first and only glimpse of the Badgers ahead of fall this weekend. Their spring practice is today. It's open to the public and you may want to be there as there is no spring game this year. The team still has a lot to work out. In addition to last year's senior class, the Badgers also said goodbye to quarterback Alex Hornibrook ahead of spring training. The practice is open to the public starting at 1130 this morning. 
If you're not going to the Midwest Horse Fair today, you'll want to avoid John Nolan Drive and Rimrock Road altogether. Traffic is expected to get so bad the Dane County Sheriff's Office sent out a press release nearly 48 hours ahead of time warning drivers about those backups. It will affect drivers heading both east and westbound on the Beltline starting at 6 o'clock this morning and running until noon. The annual Midwest Horse Fair draws around 60,000 people to the Alliant Energy Center. All right, 531 right now, and Chris, a little chilly out there, but the sun is going to make its return today. That is the truth, Josh. Clear skies, in fact, right now in the picture at the airport. A little bit of cloud cover north of Madison, but those temperatures are chillier. 34 degrees right now. That's with wind that's coming out of the southwest at 9 miles per hour. That southwesterly wind helping keep things warmer for us, if you will. 32 in Janesville right now. Monroe and Mineral Point also at the freezing mark. A little bit below freezing as you work your way towards Viroqua by one degree. That's where we do see a temperature of 31. Warmer towards the lakeshore, 36 really all up and down the lakeshore. Kenosha, the colder spot at 34. But we're still seeing those winds, folks, out of the south and west. We're going to see that kind of wind throughout the morning, turning more westerly as we head into the afternoon. This is what's going to help those temperatures at least begin to warm up just a little bit. We'll see those highs right around 47 by the time we get you into the afternoon. A live look at cloud cover, you see most of that is across parts of central and northern Wisconsin. That's why we'll keep the chance of some clouds in the forecast today, but I do think we're going to see some sunshine as well. So as you head to the first outdoor farmers market of the season, temperatures in the 30s initially, so do grab the jacket, ending things around 41, and of course we'll see those highs around 47 later on this afternoon. Chris, thank you. The Bucks begin the NBA playoffs tomorrow in Milwaukee. The number one seed faces the number eight seed in game one at Pfizer Forum at 6 p.m. Game two is Wednesday before the series goes back to Detroit next Sunday and Monday. There's every reason to believe the Bucks can do something in the playoffs this year despite their rather disappointing playoff history. The Bucks haven't won a playoff series since they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals in 2001. Tonight is the grand finale for the Badger Band's beloved and enduring director. Mike LaCrone is getting ready to pass the baton. Before he says goodbye, he shares some memories and his plans for the future with our Susan Simon. <laughs> of the band brings to life the heart and soul of a university. There will never be another quite like Mike. Mike, you know, they say at a moment like this, your life sort of flashes before your eyes. Is that what's happening this week? Every day. Every, every day? day? Every day somebody comes up and says either, thanks for what you've done with the band, thanks for the years. This weekend marks a bittersweet milestone for Mike LaCrone. Uh, after 50 years and at 82, Mike is retiring after leading the Spring Varsity Band concert for the final time. I've, I've heard you say to your band members so many times to remember these moments of happiness. Moments of happiness. Are you doing that yourself? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, that's the title of the program this oh, year. Oh, it is? Yeah, we, we've, on the, the program that we're we're handing out in the Cole Center. It's, it's called Moments of Happiness. I've done what I've told the students to do, you know, take it in and remember it because it might be something that you have to call on a little bit later in life. You've provided me with so many moments of happiness. Tears flowed in August when Mike told the band this would be his final year. I can't even begin to say this, but I will tell you, those moments of happiness are what has gotten me through any difficult time. At his last home football game, alumni of the band returned to Camp Randall to say thank you. Is it true that you remember almost all of your kids? You can remember their names and... I, I remember them from way, way, way back. And now some of them have changed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting thing is I can always remember their instrument immediately, no matter who they were. If I see someone come up who was a trombone player in the 70s, I, I would know right away trombone. At his final dress rehearsal at the Cole Center, Mike and the band practiced for five hours and prepared for one last legendary fly-in. 
it's hard to express what Mike has meant to the band and what they have meant to him. We gave each other a sort of a cooperative thing that we could do, and uh, we all feel it. I think anybody who's been in the band even one year senses that uh, camaraderie that's a part of the band, and, uh, and uh, that's what makes it work. That's the reason I've done it for all these years, is it's to have that feeling over and over again. The traditions Mike started, the fifth quarter, and the chicken dance will all live on. But as the school year comes to an end, Mike can't quite bring himself to start packing. How long have you been in this office? Since 1969. And, uh, the year you came? Yep. You've and, had the same office yep, the whole time? Yeah, and it was, uh, we've decorated a little bit. We put Mike's some... campus office is a museum of five decades of Badger memories, but one stands out above all the rest. The Rose Bowl. That, That's that, the first one? Yeah, and that was, that was special such a special event for me. It still remains as the highlight of, of what I did. It was an amazing time. That 1993-94 season was, was, was just so unbelievable. Everything worked. The response, when the band just made an appearance around the corner or came down the street, people could catch a glimpse of the, uh, the, the way the people responded to it. it. It was just a moment anybody who was there would never forget it. Well, people may not remember that it started in Japan the road to the Rose Bowl that year. Did the band go to Japan? We, uh, we took 70 people, and that's that's another thing. I mean, here, this was, for most bands, that would be a major a major touring thing, but but now when you talk about it, oh yeah, we were in Japan too. How many Rose Bowls have you been to? Six. And is there ever anything like the first one? No, not like the first one. They're Mike has had his share of tough times too. He lost his wife of 62 years, Phyllis, two years ago, and had double bypass heart surgery after that. But as he starts this new chapter, Mike remains vigorous and hopeful. So what are you going to do in retirement? Are you going to stay in Madison? I am staying in Madison. Uh, my kids are all in the area, and I'm going to plan to stay here. I probably will try to get out of the cold weather occasionally, <laughs> which I didn't have the opportunity to do before. But before he says goodbye, there will be one more iconic moment as Mike Lecrone takes his final bow. That final varsity. It, it will be hard, but uh, it, I think it's going to be one of those very special, special feelings that I have. And it's that moment of happiness that uh, there may be a little bit of sadness along with it, but it's that, it's, that's the part that I'm going to really, really remember. Incredible story there. That was Susan Simon reporting. Tickets for the remaining concert, unfortunately, is sold out, but you can still see Mike's farewell. Wisconsin Public Television will live stream the concert tonight at 7 p.m. at WPT.org. All right, 538 is your time right now. Looking for something to do this weekend? We've got some ideas for you and the family. From a wildly imaginable show for kids of all ages to a road trip destination that'll help you get ready for the Bucks playoff run. Your weekend 608 is next on News 3 Now This Morning.
Welcome back at 541. It is the weekend in the 608. And here's a look at what's going on around Madison. First up, today is Record Store Day. and Nothing says hipster like vinyl records. To celebrate, the Wisconsin Vinyl Collective is hosting an album release show at the High Noon Saloon tonight. The show will open with local Americana roots, folk rock bands, Lost Lake, Bascom Hill, and Mascot Theory. And the headliner is Michael Perry in the long beds. Yes, that Michael Perry, the best-selling author of Population 485, Truck, and other books. As it turns out, Perry writes songs as well as homespun stories. Tonight at 8, find out if he sings too. All right, well, I need some bubbles for this one. I didn't <laughs> have them, but this is probably the most wildly imaginative event happening this weekend. B. Underwater Bubble Show is alternatively titled The Unexpected Journey of Mr. B in the colorful underwater world of Bubblelandia. Yeah, <laughs> like I said. In any case, Mr. B will take audiences into his lavish underwater realm inhabited by giant seahorses, mermaids, clownfish, inflatable balls, and lots of bubbles. Mr. B will put on two shows at 3 and 6 tomorrow at the Overture's Capitol Theater. That sounds like a lot wow. of fun. And if you are taking a trip to Milwaukee this weekend, the Milwaukee River is going to look a little different. The city of Milwaukee has successfully turned its river green in celebration of the Milwaukee Bucks tipping off their playoff run this weekend. The Bucks with an NBA best 60 wins will play their first playoff game tomorrow night at 6 against the Detroit Pistons at the Pfizer Forum. Stick with News 3 now as we'll have live coverage from Milwaukee this weekend. And if you're looking for your sports fix without leaving Madison, head down to Camp Randall. Today is a big day around the stadium. From 9 to noon, there's a Badgers Kids Fair at the McLean Center. You can get in entering gates 2 and 3 of Camp Randall from 1030 to 1130 at the Fieldhouse. Director of Athletics Barry Alvarez will have a town hall type question and answer session that you all can attend. And then at 1130, practice will be open to the public. It's expected to run about two hours. Hours. A little bit of everything mm -hmm. this weekend. Remember, you can get this month's Madison Magazine for all of the best in the Madison area. 544 right now, and we can expect a little bit of sunshine out there, which is some good news for that this Saturday. That is some fantastic news, of course, after the past couple of days. You're looking live over the Capitol right now, but I'm also talking more of some shower chances oh, that boy. are returning. I'll have your full forecast coming up after the break. But first, if you have a little kid turning three soon, please let us know so we can show their picture on TV. This is News 3 Now this morning.
We're starting to see a little bit of a sunrise on the horizon. Still fairly dark out there for most folks. Temperatures are into the low and mid 30s this morning. 34 in Madison right now. Monroe has dropped down to 31. Same for Platteville. 34 as you work your way towards Watoma. Fond du Lac at 35. And things are generally actually a couple degrees warmer just to the north. That is because of some added cloud cover in the mix for them. But we have clearing skies across the southern tier of Wisconsin. Winds still coming out of the south and west anywhere from about 7 towards 15 miles per hour or so and we're going to watch those winds begin to increase again once we get the sun up and that begins to heat the ground and allow for more winds to develop. In fact, going into the afternoon, our wind will change direction just a little bit coming more out of the west, but we'll see them sustained at about 15 to 20 miles per hour going through the day. And then tomorrow that wind changes direction out of the north and east and that will pick up into the late morning and early afternoon hours as well. Things will be quiet for today. That next system that we are watching is actually starting to develop across the four quarters region and into Texas. This folks is actually going to end up being a pretty powerful uh, severe weather maker across the deep south today. Already we're starting to see those cloud tops really begin to blossom underneath or above where uh, some shadows showers and thunderstorms have begun to develop and a lot of this is going to occur across parts of Texas and Louisiana as we head into the day. This is actually where we do have the bullseye of potential severe weather. This is a level four out of five risk. We call that a moderate risk uh, and they could likely see some strong violent tornadoes throughout parts of Louisiana today. So that's what you're going to hear about across the south. Here's future radar showing that uh, storm development to our south, but this whole system then makes a run towards the Great Lakes and it's possible uh, that we actually stay dry, but we're going to be on the extreme northwestern fringe of this precipitation with a fairly sharp cutoff. Most of that though should say south and east of us. Our next true chance of precipitation won't actually come into the picture as we get you towards Thursday and into Friday. That actually could have some showers and thunderstorms with that as it comes on in. A closer look. Here's a model that's a little bit farther towards the north with that snow potential. I think this is the farthest north that snow potential is truly going to get. In fact, most of the modeling, check out this one. It's going to keep us completely dry. We top out around 47 this afternoon. Here comes that cloud cover and notice how it doesn't even show precipitation making it onto the map here in Madison. So that would of course be a welcomed sign, but we're still going to keep that chance of rain and snow in there for now, but do know that could actually come out of the forecast 61 by Tuesday, a rain chance Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> Look at Easter Sunday, Josh. Woohoo! Let's keep that snow out of the forecast. Yes, let's Fingers do it crossed. and let's keep those 60s around for sure. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we've been asking you to share your morning with us. Dan Cassidy posted this on Facebook of the sunrise over the Sugar River. Beautiful shot there. Thank you so much for sharing, Dan. What does your morning look like? Take a picture and post it to the Channel 3000 social media pages using the hashtag MyNews3Morning. Well, Madisonians got off easy this week compared to this. Here's a reminder of what things could look like around here. This is video from April 18th of last year, the final snowstorm of 2018 for our area, when we got 7.2 inches of snow. Wowzer. Glad we didn't get that this time around. All right, stay with News 3 now. This weekend, tomorrow morning, we're diving into a growing crisis, plastic in our waterways. How the growing form of pollution can make its way into the food that ends up on your plate. But first this morning, from the wild to adoption in 90 days, a Madison police officer competes in a first of its kind challenge at this weekend's Midwest Horse Fair. A preview when News 3 Now This Morning returns.
Well, the Midwest Horse Fair is in town this weekend, drawing hundreds of horses and riders from across the country. One area trainer and her filly are getting ready for a unique competition, helping horses find homes. Our Maddie O'Neill tagged along to find out how they're making that happen. Good girl. I definitely have my doubts. Uh, in the beginning, I was like, what did I get myself into? Horse trainer Alyssa Palmer knows all about sticking with it. I definitely need a lot of patience, uh, especially with this horse. She needs it with her day job, too. <laughs> it is a little different. Though from her surroundings. Good. Better. You might not be able to guess what that is. I've been with the uh, City of Madison Police Department for almost 10 years now. At first glance, you'd also never know the tale behind her horse. I figured that she'd probably be a bit of a renegade. God. Named Calamity Jane. No, she's super sweet. As soon as she got over being scared of me. It's pretty wild. But there's too many wild horses out, out on the public lands. Good. Here. As part of the Midwest Horse Fair's Mustang Challenge, Alyssa had 90 days to train the feral horse after bringing her home in January. She was terrified of me at first, yeah. From the Antelope Valley in Nevada to Alyssa's home in Spring Green, the path to trust is never easy. The very first day I had her, I sat in a lawn chair in the pen with her with a cup of coffee for an hour. With time, persistence, and I was out there when it was negative 40. We were out there working every day. And plenty of treats. And by the 10th day, we were, I was petting her all over. The two grew close. She's all over me. She trusts me. Gaining more ground than Alyssa thought possible. We truly become good friends in a short period of time. Good girl. But the whole goal of the competition. This is to show how cool these horses are and find them a home. In partnership with the Mustang Heritage Foundation and the Bureau of Land Management, the competition gives 50 competitors, including Alyssa, a wild Mustang with the goal of gaining their trust and making them adoptable. My goal was to not be last, so I, I, I'm pretty proud of where we're at. And proud of the path they've walked together. Um, I wouldn't be heartbroken if she didn't so. <laughs> Matty O'Neill reporting there. The Midwest Horse Fair Mustang Challenge continues this evening when the top 10 finalists advance to the final show. Cool to see some locals taking yeah, part there. Yeah, that was fantastic. Absolutely cool stuff there. I do have to say my middle school mascot is a Mustang, so go hey, Stangs there. Hey, my college mascot nice. is a Mustang. So <laughs> see, they're popular. There's a reason we're on this exactly. couch together. <laughs> the Bro Show, Josh and Chris. Hey, the weekend <laughs> forecast, not too shabby out there. We'll see those highs around 47 today, but it's the tale of two different days. Sunday will be cloudy and in the 30s uh, with the chance of rain and snow, but that chance is trending down, my friends. It is possible that we may escape dry going into Sunday. Keep your fingers crossed. Rain chances do return on Wednesday and Thursday along with Friday, but next weekend, folks, looks absolutely fantastic. Easter Sunday is actually my pick day of the forecast right now. All right, lots to look forward to. Oh, look at that. <laughs> You're gonna need those sunglasses. <laughs> we will see you back here for more local news at eight o'clock. <laughs>